Okay, so we want to graph two cycles of this cosecant function using transformations. So the first thing we need to do is get uh, maybe the general shape of this. So the general shape of cosecant is uh, based on the reciprocal of sine. So what I'm going to do is look at the general shape from 0 to 2 pi. And so the sine function I know looks like this. Let's do it this way. Starts at 0, goes up to 1, goes down to negative 1, and comes back to 0 at 2 pi. Okay. So this is my sine function here, 0, 1, negative 1. And from that I can get my cosecant shape. So let's do this actually. Let's make this more like a dashed line. If I can do that. And then my cosecant shape has asymptotes where sine is 0, since it's the reciprocal. And then goes up where sine goes down, again, because it's the reciprocal. So here's my cosecant shape. However, I need to, because of this 3, I need to multiply the y values by 3, since this is 3 times the cosecant function. So now, what I need to do is actually stretch this thing vertically, and these, if I multiply 0, this y value of 0 by 3, it stays 0, but if I multiply 1 by 3, it changes to a 3. If I multiply negative 1 by 3, it turns into a negative 3. So what I end up with is 0 is my middle value, but now 3 is my top, and negative 3 is my bottom. I start with an asymptote, I have an asymptote in the middle, and I have an asymptote on the end, and I have an upward U starting at 3, going up on this region, and a downward U starting at negative 3 and going down on this region. Okay, so let's do this, let's rearrange this slightly, move this over here, that's our general shape, and I need to multiply my Y values by 3. So I've done that from here to here, and I'm doing that because I'm multiplying by 3 up there in my function, okay? So this is my, this is my shape. This is what I want to kind of mimic. I just have to now figure out what x values represent the beginning and end. So I need to figure where this thing starts and where this thing ends, okay? What x values do the, does that occur? So what I'll do is I need to take this guy, my angle, and my angle starts for cosecant. Uh, with the shape, my angle starts at 0, and it ends at 2 pi. So I need to go solve a couple equations. So my graph starts when x plus pi over 5 equals 0, and my angle equals 0. Okay, and if I solve that, I'll see that x equals negative pi over 5. So I know that this is going to be when x is pi over 5, negative pi over 5. Okay, it ends, my cycle ends when my angle x plus pi over 5 equals 2 pi. So I need to subtract pi over 5 from both sides to get x by itself. 2 pi is the same as 10 pi over 5. Minus 1 pi over 5 gives me 9 pi over 5. So I know now that this is going to be e x equals 9 pi over 5 for the end of this cycle. Okay? So now I just need to take this and put it on a much nicer looking graph. Okay? So let's do that. Maybe something like this. Um, how about, let's see what we can figure out here. Now let's erase a bunch of this. Okay, so my cycle started at negative pi over 5 and ended at 9 pi over 5. So it might be a good idea to set up intervals of pi over 5s. So here's negative pi over 5, which would mean I need to use this distance to be a consistent pi over 5 distance. So here's 1 pi over 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's 9 pi over 5, okay? 
So my cycle, my shape, is going to look like this in this yellow box down here. So let me see if I can get this. So this is the yellow box I'm working in on my graph from negative pi over 5 to positive 9 pi over 5. The y values I'm interested in are 3 and negative 3, so I better label those. In fact, let's put this one over here on this other side. And my cycle, the beginning of my yellow box, starts and ends with an asymptote. So I need to mimic that. So at negative pi over 5, where my graph starts, I need to draw an asymptote, so that's negative pi over 5. And because this is a complete cycle, I know the very end of this cycle also has an asymptote. And then I go to the middle. In the middle of my cycle, I have another asymptote. So where's the middle? Well, I can simply count how many spaces there are to find the middle. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 spaces. In fact, that's 10 pi over 5s because each space here represents a pi over 5. So I can go ahead and even write down, if I wanted to, that my period is how far apart the beginning and end are, which is 10 pi over 5s. And of course, that reduces to 2 pi. So this, this function has a period of 2 pi, a complete cycle length of 2 pi. But I have an asymptote right in the middle, and if I've got 10 spaces, then my, my middle space, or my middle number, is 5 spaces over. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here's the middle. So I can draw my middle asymptote. We're almost done with this cycle. Now I need to draw an upward U in the first, between the first two asymptotes and a downward U in my second two asymptotes. And the middle of the U is in the middle of this region, which contains one, two, three, four, five spaces. That means that the, the bottom of this upward facing U is two and a half spaces in. So here's one, two and a half. So that means the bottom of this U shape is right about there. Okay. Ah, sorry about that. There we go. And now I can come over and I can approach my asymptotes going upward. Be very careful with the y-axis. Sometimes when you draw the y-axis, you treat it like an asymptote because it's a vertical line. So make sure you distinguish your asymptotes from your y-axis. The second half of this period, this cycle, I need a downward facing U, and I also have to go two and a half spaces in, in this region. So one, two and a half puts me here, and I'm down at negative three. Then I have to approach my asymptotes going down. So there's one complete cycle, and so this is one cycle, of course. If I want two cycles, then I can repeat that cycle to the left or to the right. Since I have more space on the left, I'll do my second cycle on the left side. I know my period is 10 pi over 5s, so I, I can count back 10 pi over 5s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 pi over 5s. That's the beginning of the prior cycle. And if I'm counting backwards 10 pi over 5s from negative pi over 5, that puts me at a negative 11 pi over 5. So again, since my cycle starts and ends with an asymptote, this cycle starts and ends with an asymptote as well. Halfway between, which is five intervals, one, two, three, four, five, I have another asymptote. Right, I'm drawing this just like I did my other cycle. And then halfway between those, then within my first half, I have an upward facing U, two and a half intervals in, starting at three and then going up like this. And then halfway into my second interval, two and a half spaces in, one, two and a half, I'm down at negative three, and I am going down. So this is a second complete cycle of this function. And there's an example of graphing a transformed cosecant function using your sine as your to get your shape, reciprocal of the sine function to get your shape, which I've got here in the yellow box, and then determining where on the x-axis the shape starts and ends by setting your angle that you're given, whatever you're taking the cosecant of, setting equal to zero in solving for x, and setting it equal to two pi in solving for x.